the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing Zone provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Major Day Kim and led by Drum Major Rob Moore. Elements of the Old Guard include Bravo Company, commanded by Captain Doug Rohde and led by First Sergeant Jason G. Elliman. Next on line is Hotel Company, commanded by Captain Joshua Akers and led by Sergeant First Class William Camden. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, in the center of our formation and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Sergeant Jose Lopez. Next on line is Honor Guard Company, commanded by Captain Michael Dwyer and led by Sergeant First Class John Robinson. Following is the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is com commanded by Captain Ian Quinn and led by Sergeant First Class Stephen Wood. Next on line is 289th Company, commanded by Captain Joseph Lynn and led by First Sergeant Patrick Bowser. The last element to your left, dressed in the Continental Musician's uniform, is the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit. The men and women of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing the red coats instead of the infantry blue. The corps is led today by Drum Major Beth Ford. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel David M. Lamborn, Commander, 4th Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 52 well-earned campaign streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 5 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand is the reviewing official for today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Charles W. Hooper, accompanied by the host, General James C. McConville, 40th Chief of Staff of the United States Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as honors are rendered and remain standing for the invocation given by Chaplain Brigadier General William Green, Deputy Chief of Chaplains.
Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Green. Please bow with me. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. You are with us through all of our days, even in times of change. You are still God, and we still trust in you. Today, we solicit your continued blessings for Lieutenant General Hooper, his wife Caroline, and daughters Kimberly, Stephanie, Caitlin, and granddaughter Skyla, and other family members as this committed and faithful soldier retires from the United States Army. We are especially thankful for their years of commitment, sacrifice, and dedication to this great soldier and our beloved United States of America. Our nation is thankful for Lieutenant General Hooper's decades of sacrificial service offered on behalf of the American people to preserve our rights to live and enjoy the freedoms we cherish. I pray that the years to come will continue to bring him and his family peace, joy, fulfillment, and continued well-being. God, we humbly ask that you be with them and bless them in every new endeavor. And now, Lord, thank you for allowing us to serve with this great Army family. We celebrate their service to our country. As they embrace the season of transition, we honor and commit them to your loving care. In your holy name we pray, amen. Please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the United States National Anthem. Sir, the persons to be honored in colors are present. Present the command. Please be seated. The Defense Distinguished Service Medal is being presented to Lieutenant General Charles W. Hooper, United States Army, for exceptionally distinguished service as the Director, Defense Security Cooperation Agency, from August 2017 to August 2020. Lieutenant General Hooper's brilliant leadership and vision resulted in major contributions to the success of nationally critical programs directly supporting U.S. foreign partners and national security. Responsible for the development and execution of security cooperation programs in support of United States foreign policy, his efforts included management of over $600 million of security assistance cases, as well as the training and guidance of over 18,000 individuals in the United States security cooperation workforce. Working closely with the interagency, Lieutenant General Hooper led his agency to improve the execution of the Foreign Military Sales Program, 
creating an unparalleled record of success, including implementing a once-in-a-generation legislative initiative for security cooperation reform and creation of the Defense Security Cooperation University. The distinctive accomplishments of Lieutenant General Hooper culminate a long and distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Army, and the Department of Defense. Signed, Mark T. Esper, Secretary of Defense. Headquarters Department of the Army, Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following oh, general, general officer is retired. Lieutenant, Lieutenant General Charles W. Hooper. Lieutenant General Hooper is being presented the United States flag in recognition of his time-honored service to the United States Army and the nation. The Exceptional Public Service Award is being presented to Ms. Mrs. Carolyn Katzen for Exceptional Public Service to the Department of Defense in a succession of extraordinary contributions to the United States Africa Command, United States Embassy Cairo, and Defense Security Cooperation Agency from August 2011 to, to July 2020. During this period, Mrs. Katzen was an active and vital community leader in Germany and Egypt tirelessly facilitating collaboration between family support organizations at multiple echelons and was the keystone between various agencies, spouses, and families, resulting in strengthened family resiliency and well-being. She built lasting relationships within communities, always focused on improving morale, welfare, and quality of life. Mrs. Katzen's leadership and interactions with foreign military leadership, dignitaries, and their families played a major role in advancing the mission of the Department of Defense. Mrs. Katzen exemplifies the spirit of outstanding public service, is a role model for volunteerism, and her leadership inspired others to acts of community service. The distinctive accomplishments of Mrs. Carolyn Katzen are in keeping with the finest traditions of public service and reflect great credit upon herself and the Department of Defense. Signed, Dr. James H. Anderson, Acting Under Secretary for Policy. On the occasion of retirement of this distinguished soldier, we also recognize the outstanding dedicated service and support of his spouse, Mrs. Carolyn Katzen. Therefore, she is being presented the Department of the Army Certificate of Appreciation. And now, the Chief of Staff will make a special presentation. At this time, on behalf of Lieutenant General Hooper, a bouquet of roses are being presented to Mrs. Katzen in recognition of her support and dedication. Also at this time, a bouquet of flowers are also being presented to Lieutenant General Hooper's daughters, Miss Caitlin Hooper, Mrs. Kimberly Hooper, and Miss Stephan Stephanie Hooper. A single rose is being presented to Lieutenant General Hooper's granddaughter, Skylar Tumasi. We are proud to recognize Lieutenant General Hooper and Mrs. Katzen's devotion to our country, and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Post the colors! Snap, right? Face! Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the 40th Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConnell. Well, well, good afternoon. Uh, Dr. Anderson, Mr. Mercado, uh, General Ham, distinguished guests, diplomats, fellow general officers, and all those joining us, joining us today, both here and online. You know, every day is a great day to be the United States Army because we serve with the world's greatest soldiers, and you can see them on the, 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 um, the parade field today. How about a hand for our great soldiers? And today is a particularly great day because we get to honor the distinguished 41, I say again, 41 year career of Lieutenant General Charles Hoop Hooper as he retires as Director of Defense Security Cooperation Agency. You know, Hoop hails from Willing, Willingboro, New Jersey, hometown of Carl Lewis, a famous Olympian who he knows very, very well and very, very proud of. Nine gold medals one silver medal, they were on the track team together. And you know, one of the great things about being the Chief of Staff of the Army, you get to meet incredible people, and you get to hear their stories. And because every one of us has a story, and I can tell you that Hoop has a great story. He decided to serve his country because of the people in his life who inspired him. In his case, it was his late father a veteran Marine sergeant, and one of the famous chosen few, if you know about the Marine Corps history, those who fought at the Chosen Reservoir in the Korean War, a very tough battle. He landed in Incheon, and he fought with the 1st Marine Division. But serving his country overseas wasn't enough for Hoop's dad. He went on to serve for 27 years as a New York City firefighter. Hoof's father raised him as if he was a young Marine. He had an unshakable faith in his country and instilled in Hoop a desire to serve, protect, and better his country. So how does a Marine kid end up a Lieutenant General in the Army? Well, Hoop originally planned to attend the Navy Academy in Annapolis. Hmm. That would have been a bad choice. Anyways, West Point was plan B, 
But then one day, he came across a bunch of midshipmen and cadets who were competing in the same track meet as his high school. It was the 1975 Penn Relays in Philadelphia. All the mid midshipmen could talk about was track and running. Kind of ironic when you think about it. It was the Navy talking about running? I didn't like that. Sorry about those. Okay. The cadets were talking about summer training, airborne school, ranger school, jungle school. All the seniors were excited about their upcoming assignments and becoming platoon leaders. Their excitement was contagious, and Hoop went home and told his dad he was going to West Point. And the rest is history. Hoop earned his commission for the United States Military Academy in 1979 as an infantry officer. But despite being an excellent infantry officer, that's not his legacy in the Army. His legacy is that the Army's premier foreign area officer. But more about that later. But first, I want to acknowledge Hoop's family beginning with his wife, Carolyn, who's sitting on the podium. The Army isn't a job, it's a profession, and it's a way of life. And as a fellow general officer, I can test that it's nearly impossible to make it this far without the support of your family. Like Hoop, Carolyn chose to serve her country in a foreign service capacity as well, serving at the U.S. Embassy in Beijing. The two met at an interagency China conference both are fluent in Chinese and consider it their household language, which comes very handy when you're talking in front of salespeople who don't, you don't want to know what you're saying. In fact, Hoop's ac accent, accent, and my accent from Boston, is surprisingly so convincing that when people meet him, they're very surprised that, that he can actually speak Chinese the way he does. It's, he's just an absolutely, you know, almost a native speaker. And Carolyn was instrumental in leading the family sport organizations in China, Germany, Egypt. And she took an active role in the foreign attaches wives associations in China and Egypt. So Carolyn, thank, thank you for your service, for your support, both to the country, uh, in our army and military families. We really appreciate that. And Hoop and Caroline are joined today by their three accomplished daughters. Kimberly is a family sport coordinator for the Exal 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 uh, easy for me to say, Alexandria Public Schools, and she's here with her husband, Kojo. Stephanie is the director of Bright Horizons Childhood Education Center in Phoenix. And the youngest, Caitlin, is home with mom and dad going to school. How about a hand for the kids? And today is a happy day for the Hooper family, but it's a bittersweet day for the Army. Because today we are losing one of our most accomplished foreign area officers in the history of the Army. We draw our greatest strengths as a fighting force from our relationships with our allies and partners. And it's our foreign area officers who are the professional caretakers of those relationships. They live in those countries. They are experts in history, culture, and foreign relationships. You know, I often engage with allies and partners all the time, but it's our foreign area officers who speak the language, who know the culture, who really foster those relationships. And who chose the FAO path early on in his Army journey, and ever since he has embarked on a career of firsts. In 1989, when Hoop earned his graduate degree from Harvard, I say again, Harvard, he became the first active duty Army student and the first Kennedy School of Government student to give the, stu the, to give the student commencement address. Incredible achievement. He was also the first Army student to receive the Kennedy School Don K. Price Award for academic excellence in public service. Another great accomplishment. Two years later, he established the Department of Defense, Defense Security Cooperation University. He established the Disker Institute for Security Governments to serve as the DOD Center for Excellence and for foreign military institution capacity building. He created the Security Cooperation Career Field for Army civilians. He was the first recruiting battalion commander to make general officer. And while other foreign areas officers earned a star, he was the first to earn a second and the first to earn a third. 
He was the first FAO to serve in a geographic co combatant command as a plans officer and the first to serve as the principal plans officer for AFICOM. He's the first foreign area officer to serve as a senior defense official and defense attaché to Egypt. And finally, he was the first area for FAO to direct the Defense Security Cooperation Agency. Hoop has developed a community with the Army so successful that it has served as a model for our sister services developing their own foreign area officer professions. And one thing, however, is even more impressive than Hoop's career first. In addition to four decades of accomplishments serving his country, Hoop has continued to earn the respect and admiration of all who know him, especially within the foreign area officer community, but outside as well. And so to the Hooper family, thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for your commitment in supporting Hoop in the Army journey. And Godspeed in this next chapter of your life. Hoop, thank you so much for so many years of service, so many years of protecting, and so many years of bettering our country. I know that your father couldn't be with us today, but I can only imagine just how proud he is. People first, winning matters, we remain Army strong. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Hooper. General and Mrs. McConville, Under Secretary Anderson, General Ham, distinguished guests, members of the West Point class of 1979. I knew I could count on you. Family and friends, both here, at home, and overseas. Thanks for attending and thanks for tuning in at whatever crazy hour it might be for you. I know we have friends from Beijing, Cairo, Germany, and New Zealand watching as well as South Korea, so thanks for staying up, guys. So what is there left to say after 41 years in the Army, after 41 years of conferences, seminars, and meetings, 41 years of speeches, formations, and briefings, 41 years of bog sats? For those of you that don't know, a bog sat is a bunch of guys and gals sitting around talking. What is there left to say? You would think I would have said everything there was to say. And I know my family and friends are out there thinking, well, if there is anything to say, he's going to say it loudly while waving his hands because he's from New Jersey, and that's what we do. In all seriousness, all there is left to say is thank you. Thank you to everyone who made this 41-year blessing of a journey possible. And so that's what I'm going to try to do here today. I have to begin by thanking my family. My family has always been my rock of Gibraltar, my castle, my refuge, my inspiration. As the chief was saying, I have to thank first my father, Charles Milton Hooper, United States Marine, New York City fireman, for sharing with me his love of his country and an unquenchable thirst for learning and to serve. 
I still remember the last words my father said to me when he dropped me off at West Point. With, with tears in his eyes, he looked at me and he said, boy, you better not mess this up. This school is free. <laughs> my, my father was kind of a tender guy, um, sensitive, as you would expect a Marine New York City fireman to be. I thank my mother, Irma Hooper, for sharing with me her positive attitude and patience for teaching me to treat everyone with respect, no matter who they were, and that mo no matter what people say, everything isn't relative. There is right and wrong in this world, and that I had a duty and an obligation to do what was right. Ma, I know you wanted to be here, and I know you're watching now, but you're at home, and you're watching safe, and I love you. I thank my siblings, Dr. Alnetta Hooper, Mark Hooper, and my nephew, Mark Charles Hooper, who is with Grandma right now watching. Hi, Mark. Happy birthday. I thank all my uncles, aunts, cousins, the elders in my extended family for sharing their love of life, their wisdom, and their humor. I thank my mother-in-law, Ronna Katzen, and my wife, Caroline's extended family for welcoming me as one of their own. Thank you all so much. I thank my beautiful children, Kimberly, Stephanie and Caitlin for following dad all around the world and for eating all the strange things people offered you in street markets from Hong Kong to Stuttgart to Beijing to Cairo. You are the light of my life. And finally, I thank my beautiful wife, Caroline, my best friend, my wise political counselor, my fiercest defender and the love of my life. Thank you, sweetheart, for everything. But there are others I'd like to thank for my military career, and I'd like to begin by thanking the following military units. And if you don't know who they are, I urge you to look them up. The 9th and 10th United States Cavalry Regiments, the 24th and 25th United States Infantry Regiments, the Buffalo Soldiers, the 6888 or the 6888 Central Postal Directory Battalion, the 555th Parachute Infantry Regiment, the 2nd Ranger Company, the 99th Fighter Squadron, the 332nd Fighter Group, the Moffett Point Marines, and the Naval Officers of the Golden 13. These great Americans and many others cut a path through the brambles of inequity and injustice and blazed a trail that made my journey possible. I would not be here were it not for their service to their country. The nation and all of us owe them an internal debt of gratitude. I thank my friends and classmates from the West Point class in 1979. I want to make clear that I would have never made it through the military academy and the years that followed without your support, your humor, and your fellowship. But I got to tell you, just remember, just because I'm retiring, what happened at West Point stays at West Point, and we will never speak of it again, okay? You guys are just as crazy and wild as you were 45 years ago and just as fun to be around. It was my classmates that reminded me this week that by spending 41 years in the Army, I've done more time than most convicted felons. So you guys are my brothers, and I love you. Thanks as well to my Army colleagues, teammates, and friends. You will always be family to me. I thank every soldier, sailor, airman, Marine, civilian, and non-commissioned officer who put up with my nonsense and my bright ideas and took the time to make me a better leader and commander, who placed their faith in me and sometimes their lives in my hands, and whose sweat and endured hardship served to inspire this nation and will continue to do so long after I'm gone. I was raised by veterans, and most of them were NCOs. I'm the first officer in my family. And I'm the son, grandson, and great-grandson of sergeants. So I'm Major Santiago. I saw you over there, my battle buddy. My senior enlisted leader from DSCA, you're representing all of them today, and I miss all of them and I'll miss you too. I thank every commander, supervisor, and mentor who guided me, defended me, supported me, spoke on my behalf behind closed doors, trusted me, empowered me to do my job, and then recognized me when I did well. Many of you are here in this room watching. I will never forget your kindness, never. Thank you. Thanks to all our allies and partners around the world, it's been my honor to work closely with you over the last 41 years and to play a small role in strengthening the relationships between our countries. 
Thank you for hosting me and my family in your countries and sharing your lives with ours. And thank you for your dedication and for standing with the United States as we face our common threats and challenges. Thanks to my Defense Security Cooperation Agency, the most amazing group of professionals I have ever worked with. You've made the United States the global security partner of choice, and I was proud and honored to be your director. And finally, thanks to the United States Army, who gave me the opportunity to lead soldiers and represent my country at the highest levels of strategic leadership. I also thank my Army for hundreds of memories and stories I'll be telling for years. So, so many stories. I remember deploying my infantry company in the Philippines to guard a dead water buffalo killed by Navy SEALs. It was about 100 degrees out, and uh, that, that water buffalo was getting pretty ripe. And we had to wait until the exercise damage control officer showed up from Subic Bay on a boat five hours later. I remember escorting the commander of Chinese Airborne Forces during a visit to Fort Bragg. And when I asked him what weapons impressed him the most, without hesitation, he said, your soldiers, their poise, their maturity, they're five generations ahead of our soldiers. I remember driving an Allied officer on his first visit to the U.S. We drove from Vegas to, to the National Training Center, and we stopped at Denny's on I-15 for breakfast. So we looked at the menu, uh, and he asked the waitress if the strawberries on the Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity breakfast were fresh. She was clearly at the end of her shift, and she gave me one of those looks like, are you kidding me? I explained to my foreign colleague that those strawberries had been fresh sometime before the American Civil War, uh, but were probably not fresh now. And this is only one example of how, an, as an Army FAO, I've had the opportunity to represent the very best of American cultures. My duties have taken me sailing on the Nile River, walking the foothills of the Himalayas in Tibet and at Mount Kenya, to the Golden Triangle on the Thai-Burmese border, to exploring safe slave holding pens off the coast of Cameroon, riding horses in the shadow of the Great Pyramid of Giza, and climbing the Great Wall of China over and over and over and over again. And if you don't believe I climbed that thing 100 times, uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense Chad Sabraja and Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense Heino Klink were in that dream team that I had in Beijing, and they can tell you, uh, we gave out a case of beer for every 10 times you climbed the Great Wall, and we drank a lot of beer. I'm going to miss, and, and I'm thankful for the memory of crossing Siberian Russia on the Trans-Siberian Railway in the dead of winter and sharing my Slim Jims, M&Ms, and Jack Daniels with the Russian military officers that always seem to share my sleeping car. Go figure. I've helped fishermen in Fujian, China pull in their fishing nets. I've smoked Marlboros with Hungarian smugglers who told me they were going to miss communism because they were making so much money. And I was in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia at a rock concert the day Stalin's statue was pulled down. And I'm thankful to my army for these and many more stories and memories. I'm also proud and thankful to have served in the most capable army the world has ever known, but an army that has also fed the hungry, cared for the sick, built schools for children, and led the fight for racial and gender equality. And I know that as an army, we will keep pressing forward. So I've reached the end of this speech and in the, in the end of my 41-year journey. I gave it everything I had, and I left everything on the field, every assignment. I'm at peace, and I'm ready to move on to the next adventure. For those of you who are still in the fight, leave everything on the field every day you're in the fight. Do the right thing and enjoy every minute of it. Sir, one last thanks to you for the honor of this ceremony and the great soldiers of the old guard to give myself and my family one last wonderful memory to take with us into retirement. Again, to all of you, thanks for sharing this with me. I wish you all continued safety and good health. God bless our Army, and God bless and keep the United States of America. Thanks.
Ladies and gentlemen, the army song. The United States Army is honored to have presented today's special ceremony. Due to social distancing guidelines and restrictions, there will not be a receiving line. Please maintain proper social distancing as you exit Comney Hall. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.